The MacBook Pro is at an interesting stage for Apple. I'm still using the most modern MacBook Pro that Apple released last year with the remove function keys and touch bar, redesigned keyboard and massive trackpad, and people were pretty mixed about it. A lot of people really like it and a lot of people have an endless supply of problems with it. It's even a big problem that Consumer Reports didn't recommend it until Apple showed them that they were reviewing the product wrong and then they did recommend it for battery life reasons, which I admit battery life is not the best, but it's not bad enough to make it not worth it. I've still very much to enjoyed it. I've used it on a day-to-day -day basis. I'm editing this video on it right now, but there's a lot of debate going on about how useless the touch bar was. And when I first had the touch bar and I had some time to play with it, I admitted that third-party apps taking advantage of the touch bar was going to make or break it. It's a tool with a lot of potential, but there needs to be more support for it, not just by in-house Apple products. We've kind of seen that. However, third parties have not adopted the touch bar much at all. It's just kind of been there for your occasional Final Cut buttons, your occasional predictions text, your tabs in Safari, scrolling through things, volume, brightness, all that is kind of cool because you can slide down instead of press. But it added another $300 to the price tag and a lot of people don't like that and a lot of people don't seem to think it's needed to have a fingerprint reader in their laptop. I think it's a really great way to log in but some people want something more basic and that's why we've been reading reports that Apple is working on more laptops that don't have touch bars that will have premium specs and just regular old keys because that's what a lot of people want. Simplicity, they don't want this new touch but not touch screen laptop and this is Apple playing the safe route and simply catering to the customer's demands. <sighs> but I know a different Apple. I know an Apple that back when Steve Jobs was around, they decided what we wanted. And as the Apple sheep, we found out we liked it. We thought removing the disk drive was terrible. Apple, why would you do that with the MacBook Air? And now everyone loves the MacBook Air. They want a refresh of it. Everyone's demanding for a new version. They removed the floppy disk drive. People went insane back then, but Apple said, no, there's a better way to do this. What other ports do we got back here? Firewire. We don't have Firewire anymore. Apple decided there was a better way. And it's not because no one was using those ports. These were very commonly used ports back then, but they removed it. And with this new MacBook Pro concept I've discovered online that catered directly to my wishes, Apple removed something else you wouldn't see coming, the physical keyboard itself. It merges the trackpad and the keyboard into this one on-screen thing to have a massively large trackpad with plenty of touch space, and the keyboard itself would be a touch display. And believe me, I understand absolutely nobody would like that at all. So people don't like the touch bar, so Apple unveils this this whole thing, with the touch screen being the entire bottom with no physical buttons, reception would look a little bit like this. <laughs> just have to hate it. I personally love it whenever Apple does something that takes courage. Back when they removed the headphone jack, people were making fun of them. That's courage, right? It's like, no, literally, if you hate that they removed the headphone jack, that's still courage because Apple knew they would be hated for that. And if you think it's a good thing that they removed it, it's courage because everyone is using it still and it's been around for a hundred years and Apple is taking the liberty of saying no more headphone jack. So agree or disagree, it is courageous to remove something. You can argue whether or not it's dumb, but it took a lot of bravery to do that. I think this this would be the brave move with the new MacBook Pro is to say, look, we don't believe in touchscreen laptops because the display area is meant to be vertical and the input area where you talk to your computer is meant to be horizontal. So we're going to have all of your inputs be a touchscreen device, your trackpad, your keyboard, which of course can change depending on the app you're using. Imagine how that could adapt. Because right now, maybe third parties don't adopt to the touch bar very much because it is a very small touchscreen. It's very long, but there's not much you can do with it other than add a few buttons. Adobe Photoshop took advantage of it, but Adobe Premiere never did, After Effects never did, common programs that people like to use. So perhaps the laptop experience could be drastically improved if they change the entire keyboard magic trackpad layout into one solid OLED touchscreen powered with a very capable external chip, similar to the touch bar we have now, which is powered by a very small processor chip that they use in the Apple Watch, since this would be powering a 2000 by 2000 resolution display that's OLED, so most of the pixels are off. 
we'd need something like an A8 chip like they use in the Apple TV that works alongside the components inside the MacBook Pro, which of course will be faster. And with this great trackpad, have Apple Pencil support. You can connect it to your Mac and then artists can use it to draw on it. They don't have to buy an external touchpad. The Apple Pencil is a very capable stylus that works great on the iPad Pro. Imagine bringing it to Apple's Pro laptop. What if Apple designed their own custom Mac OS drawing tool to ship with this Apple Pencil? We could even see the new redesigned pencil with USB-C so you could pair it directly to the MacBook. That way you have your certified Mac OS stylus made by Apple themselves and it would work great. And yes, I understand everyone would hate that because you're used to your physical keys and Apple removes too much stuff, right? Well, look, I'm not saying they have to remove the regular keyboard and trackpad layout MacBooks. I'm just wishing that they could cater to both audiences because Apple is a large ship right now, okay? They're trying to appeal to a lot of different people and there's a lot of people out there who when they think MacBook Pro update, what they want is thinner design with newer ports, but still legacy ports. Because what if I still have my USB cables? I want a port. What if I have all my old SD cards? I want to keep using the SD card slot, but I want USB-C kinda. Like I want the option to use it, but I want all my old stuff to work. But I also want MagSafe. So USB-C can be used to charge, but I would prefer it not to. I want it to ship with MagSafe because I trip on my cable cord all the time. That seemed to be the loudest complainers with the new MacBook Pro came out. They basically want their old laptop. So essentially all they want is the laptop they have now to come out and be a lot faster. But what you don't realize is if Apple did that, no one would care. And all the people complaining now would be like, this is all Apple could think of. There's no innovation here. They just made it faster. So then Apple does take drastic steps, you know, touch bar, touch ID, bigger trackpad, different keyboards, different layout of ports, and then everyone flips out. That's not what I wanted. You guys just don't buy a new laptop. Keep the one you have. Then of course, there's the polar opposite of those group of people. That's where I lie. I am okay with buying all new cables. I'm okay with buying all new adapters. I don't think using dongles is very hard. People act like it's the worst thing in the world. It's like two seconds to plug in something. I think if we can convince the accessory industry that we're using fewer and fewer ports that are less capable than the newer ones, then they will adapt to us. I don't think we should have our laptops adopting to the accessory market. I think that's backwards. So I am totally okay with new innovations like that and changing the way I do things. And that's why this MacBook Pro concept is so fascinating to me. It would drastically change the look of our laptops, the functionality of them. And I know a lot of people hate virtual keyboards, but I feel like they don't give them enough of a chance. I used my iPad Pro for over a year before I bought my laptop and I got really good at typing on that virtual keyboard. It's not physical. It's just on screen, but you can type just as fast on that. You really can. You just have to commit to it a little bit. It's different, but you know, Apple keeps making their keyboards thinner and thinner. I think their hope is that one day they can just go complete touch and we'll be used to that. This of course brings up the idea of having a taptic engine underneath it so that you feel some physical feedback. But listen, anyone who has an iPhone 7 knows that if you rest it on a table and press the home button, you get very little physical feedback. And I feel like that would be a similar problem with this MacBook. Even if it had a taptic engine, which Apple hasn't put a taptic engine in a device of that size yet like they haven't put it in the iPad so the likelihood of them putting it in a MacBook is pretty rare but even if they had the tactics you would feel very little in your fingertips you would get a little bit of something but I think you would get a bigger more convincing experience of a virtual keyboard if they just had the speakers tick a little bit when you type what if they even had a lower pitch tick when you hit the space bar so like they get that just right. I don't know. I'm just curious. I'm interested in giant steps forward like that, especially the kind that make people really upset. I love it when Apple does that because it means they found a way to make something better, even if everyone hates doing it. Because a few years will go by and then we'll not understand how we lived with that. Let me know what you think of this MacBook Pro concept in the comments below. I already know what you think. Y'all hate it. That's fine. Different opinions is fine. I don't hate you for it. I'm just telling you what I would like to see. What if someone jailbroke it and you could put iOS running on the bottom part of your laptop? and you can have both running side by side. Whoa, a hybrid device. Apple has a touchscreen on a Mac, but not really. I don't know, this is all hypothetical. There's no rumors to prove this. This is just a concept that I love. This is your Apple Shape here, and I will see you in the next one.